In today's video, we're going to be learning about a powerful way to A-B test your subscription paywalls to increase in-app purchase revenue. We're going to be doing this with a platform called Adapti. Here we are on the Adapti homepage. It's a pretty awesome way where you can A-B test different paywalls. You can capture analytics about you know, what's going on with your subscriptions, your churn. We can see some pretty great metrics here in terms of all the folks that have integrated the Adapti SDK for a variety of platforms that they support. Of course, we'll be focusing on iOS today. They also have integrations available that we won't look at too much, but definitely worth calling out. But yeah, we're gonna basically go through this, set it up and see it running in a iOS app. Now, of course, there's some amazing documentation that I'm not gonna bore everyone with. We're here to write some code. So without further ado, start by dropping a like down below. Let's go to the Adapti homepage. I'm gonna hit login since I've already created an account here. And let's also create an Xcode project and start building this out. So we're going to create an Xcode project here and stick with the app template under iOS. I will call this project Sport Center, just like that. And we're gonna stick with Swift and UIKit, therefore storyboard here for the interface option. I'll save it and toss it onto my desktop. Now, first things first, we are gonna bring in a little bit of starter code that we're gonna walk through together. It's more or less the UI for our paywalls. So I'll drag this folder in and not to worry, we will talk through all the code that we had just brought in. But first things first, we need to actually get to our uh, Adapti platform website page considered, and we also need to get some uh, something showing up on our app in our simulator. So let's see if we can do that. So first and foremost, we actually see an error here. And the reason we see that error is because we need to bring in the Adapti SDK. We're gonna bring that in leveraging CocoaPod. So I'll open up terminal and CD into our project folder and run pod in it as well as open the pod file it will create for us. Once we go and do that, we can bring in the Adapti SDK. So we'll do Adapti just like that and lowercase that P and run pod install to install it in our project. Once we've done that, it should have created a XE workspace that we can open on up. And if we actually collapse, rather expand this, all of these, since we'll need to work in it, and give it a build once more, you'll see that everything should hopefully be compiling. Now, once we get this showing up in a simulator, we'll jump on over to the Adapti website and configure our new app. So it looks like it's definitely showing up, nothing going on here quite yet. Before we jump over to the website, I will go and copy this bundle ID since we'll need it momentarily to set up our app. Now, once you log in, it'll prompt you to create your first app. Now, I've already created one, so I'll hit the little drop down here and select the option to add a new app. And this is the same flow that you all will see. So, we're going to start entering the information here. So, we're going to say this is going to be Sports Center. The category here perhaps will stick with entertainment. The app icon, I believe I can omit for now. And let's try that one more time. Looks like I clicked out of it. So, we'll do sport center and let's make sure we spell this correctly the category will stick with entertainment the icon will omit and we'll go ahead and continue and create this and it's literally that simple to create it but we do need to do a little bit of configuration now the configuration starts in the app settings we'll jump on in here and under general all this gist we don't need to partic particularly enter anything uh, we will need that API key momentarily, but under iOS SDK, the important bit is your bundle ID. So we previously copied it. We can simply paste it on in. Now I do want to call out that there is the App Store Connect shared secret here, as well as promotional offers and a URL for App Store server notifications. We're not going to be setting these up in today's video, but all of these fields are available uh, to be grabbed from App Store Connect, so Adapti's platform and backend can connect to Apple. So now that we've actually gone and added our bundle ID here, the next thing that we want to do is configure the Adapti SDK in our project. Now we see public SDK key here, we'll hit this button to copy it, and we're going to jump into our project's app delegate where we will start by importing Adapti right up top here. And in this first function, application did finish launching with options. All we can do here is say Adapti, 
go ahead and activate yourself and pass in your API key. So once you do that, give your application a run and you'll see a whole lot of nothing has happened here. But if we come back to the dashboard after a few seconds, under the iOS SDK tab, if we refresh the page, you should see a check mark here like that saying installed and working. So this, at this point, we know that we have our SDK configured and we can get to the fun part, which is dealing with products and paywalls. We're gonna click on products and paywalls on the left-hand side, and we can talk through these. Products are fairly self-explanatory. They are the products that are available for a in-app purchase in your application. And a paywall is the screen that you show the user to make that purchase. Now, the thing we're trying to optimize here that Adapti makes really seamless is you might have different screens for different uh, you know, scenarios. It might be onboarding. It might be a promotional offer. And you want to try and figure out which screen is optimal for your users to actually purchase and become paying customers. Now, doing that manually is a bit of a pain since you have to continuously update your app. But not to worry, we're going to use Adapti and see this in action right now. So the first thing we want to actually do is add a product since we can't really have a paywall without products. So I'll click product here and we're going to hit this big blue button to add a product and we're going to add two products. The first one we're going to do is called the VIP monthly. And as you can probably guess, the cadence of this for the period will be monthly. We also want to specify access level which is how we can gate various features once a user subscribes. And premium is one of the ones that you get out of the box whenever you create an app. Also important here, we wanna specify the app store uh, product ID. So here I'm gonna go with iOS dot, rather io dot iOS Academy dot sports dot monthly. And we're gonna copy this since it's pretty important that this matches what we have in App Store Connect or in our local configuration file, which we will set up momentarily. We can also set up an offer like a free trial. We're not going to do that today. We'll go and create this and we have a product. Now back in Xcode, we want to create a new file. So we're going to go to file new and we want to select the file option here. Let's try that one more time. We'll select file and we're going to look for store kit configuration. Storekit configuration allows you to locally set up products to test in your simulator. We're gonna hit the plus at the bottom left and select add auto renewable subscription. And we'll give this a subscription name of VIP. Looks like I've got a typo there. So let's actually fix that VIP. We only want one I. And underneath this, it already created one a tier for this subscription. We're gonna give it a reference name of monthly. And this is the important bit. We wanna paste that product ID in here. We'll give it a price of $9.99 per month. I will also add some metadata for the English localization. So we'll say VIP monthly become a VIP user with an exclamation mark just to make it a little more fun. In addition to this, we're going to be doing this for one other product for a yearly subscription, but we also want to specify in our scheme, we're going to hit edit scheme, that we want to use this configuration file. So on the left hand side, we want to make sure we're selecting on run and at the top here options. And for store kit configuration right now, it should be none. We're going to hit the configuration file we've created and we should be good to go to test momentarily. Let's create one more product by doing the same steps and we should see our uh, application running in a second here. So here we'll say VIP yearly, the period IE cadence will be annual since it'll be billed once a year. And again, the important piece here is the product ID. So we'll say io.iosacademy and we're gonna say sports. let's call this yearly instead of annual. And just like that, we'll create it boom, add it, and we are good to go. And let's just add it here as well. And we'll start talking about paywalls. So here we want to add a new subscription to the VIP group. It has created it, so we're gonna call this yearly. We'll paste on in that product ID, and let's make this maybe $100 a year, 99, 99 a year. And important here is change the duration to one year. Similarly, we also want to change the metadata. We'll say annual. VIP, become VIP for the whole year. Just like that, and we should be good to go. 
Now we can jump on over to paywalls, which is where things start to get very interesting. So paywalls allows us to specify various custom configuration in addition to run A-B tests on our paywall. If you're not familiar with A-B testing, it's a concept of having two or more variants and showing a group of users A variant and showing another group of users the B variant. And from that, you can analyze and see which one is performing better or perhaps worse. So we're going to click into paywalls and we're going to start by creating a paywall. The first thing we want to specify here is a paywall name. So maybe I'll go ahead and call this the standard paywall. Next up, we want a paywall ID. I like to use the same thing as a name, but just lowercase. We want to also add products related to a paywall, which makes sense because we want something to actually show up. So we'll add the yearly in addition to the monthly. And the really cool thing about Adapti is we can actually specify a remote config, which you can imagine you can do some pretty interesting things with. In our case, we're not going to specify too many things, but we are going to specify some things. We'll have a title, subtitle, axis, and theme. So theme is going to be either dark or light. I'll stick with dark here. We're going to have an axis, either vertical or horizontal. So I'll stick with vertical here. We'll also have a subtitle and a title. The title in this case, we'll go ahead and say VIP access will be the title here. Unlock all features and enjoy just like that and this is our first paywall now we're going to be using these properties in that starter code that i had brought in and we'll talk about it in a moment so let's actually create this just like that let's see we should be good to go looks like i am missing something here so we have created standard here and it looks like this is what's good we're going to be using in the sdk paywall id we have Apple promotion offers and let's see what else is the issue here. Let's get rid of that comma and looks like that was the issue. Let's create one more paywall here so we can see two of them in action. This one I will call AB candidate and here we'll just say AB is the product ID and or paywall ID I should say. We'll add products again, same ones, and we're gonna paste in the same JSON structure, but we're just gonna change some of the properties. So axis here will be horizontal instead of vertical. Our theme will be light instead of dark, and we'll change the title here as well. We'll say become VIP, and here we will say try out the powerful features. Try out our powerful features. That sounds pretty enticing, so we'll go with that and see how well this performs with people actually purchasing. So all right, now that we've done a whole lot of configuration, it's time to jump into some more code. So we have a screen here which absolutely shows nothing. So we want a button there, and we also want to be able to fetch our paywalls. So in our first view controller, which is our primary controller, we're going to import Adapty, and we are going to call two functions here. We're going to say set up a button, and we're going to say get paywalls. Now we need to specify these functions, of course. So here we're going to do get paywalls and we're also going to specify set up button. Now we want a button to show once the paywalls have been fetched, but we need to create that button first. So right here, I will say that a button will be a UI button. And this button will, of course, look a little bit nice. We'll do a little bit of styling work here to make it look a little more appealing for a user to tap on. So I'll say button, background color, we'll stick with perhaps system blue. We'll also set a title to this button. We'll say set title. And let's try that one more time. We'll say set title here. We'll say uh, purchase for the normal state. We'll also go ahead and set a title color here of white so we can actually see it on the blue background. And we're going to be leveraging constraints to lay it out as well. So we'll set translate auto resizing masks into constraints to false. Now that we've got this button here, we can add it as a sub view and we can begin to add some constraints to it as well just to get it to show up on our screen. So we'll specify a width anchor here, which will be 200. I can also go and collapse this left panel momentarily while we work on our code here. We'll also specify a height anchor of 50 just to get our button to look nice and well-rounded. And we'll also want to specify a center X anchor constrained to the center X anchor of the primary view. So here we will say center X anchor 
And finally, we'll also do the center Y anchor, and we should start to see our button. Now, before we give it a run, we also want our button to do something when the user taps on it. So I will add a target with an action, AKA a selector of did tap button. And this is going to be for the event of touch up inside. I will specify that function right down here. Now we can go ahead and give this a run and see this button in action. So we should see a button here. It doesn't do anything quite yet. And we aren't fetching anything from adapt yet either. Now to fetch our paywalls, we're going to say adapt -E, all capital or a capital, I should say, and we want to get the paywall. So the function we care about is get paywalls and it takes a completion handler here. As you can see, we can also specify it to force update, presumably because adapt -E's SDK is caching it. And then the callback here, we get a variety of important models. The ones we care about are the paywalls and the error. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure this paywalls isn't nil since it is optional. We're also going to leverage the error and make sure nothing has gone wrong. We're going to make sure it's nil. And finally, what we can do is we want to hang on to the actual paywalls. So we're going to say self dot paywalls is equal to paywalls. Now we don't have a property here for paywalls, so we need to create one. So we'll say that the paywalls here is going to be an array of paywall models just like that our button will also be hidden by default and essentially once our paywalls have been fetched from uh, adapty will unhide our button so down here what we can go ahead and do is say on the main queue we want to say the button is hidden is now going to be false so if you give it a run, we'll start off with no button and then our button will show up. Now what we can actually do is start to take a look at our starter code that we brought in since that's where our layout will happen. Now we had brought in this folder called paywall and we essentially have three things in here. We have a paywall view controller, which is a controller that can generically take in a configuration and display our paywall. So if we start to read through this, we see that we have a primary view, which is our paywall view. We have a view model that we take in via the initializer. And essentially we just lay out this view as well as conform to the purchase method from the paywalls delegates. There's not a whole lot going on in here and now we can jump into the paywall view. Now the paywall view has a delegate so we can notify the delegate once the subscribe button is tapped. And the most important part of this is the view model definition that we have here. Now from the adapty paywall fetch request, we expect to get a model with our custom configuration on it. From that, we are going to pull out the title, subtitle, axis, and theme, as well as products, and create this view model that we pass in. This view essentially has several sub views to take all that information and display it in a meaningful way and have it be constrained. That's essentially all that we are doing in here. And finally, on our paywall for every single product, we're going to have a row that we show either vertically or horizontally. And that's what this paywall option view is. So let's actually go back to our main view controller and create once this uh, button is tapped a view model and pass it on in. So the view controller that we will be creating is a paywall view controller, capital W here and we're gonna create it with a view model. Now, where do we get this view model from? Well, we create it right above. So what we want to do is say view model is going to be our paywall view dot view model, just like that. And this takes in a couple properties that we will be pulling out from our paywall momentarily. See here we have an axis, a theme, as well as some products. Now we should be getting two paywalls back from the adapty call. So what we can do is we can say our model will be our first paywall in the collection. So we'll just do that and we should have our model like so. Now the model has a collection of products on it and this is of type product model that adapty's SDK specifies. And the other thing we want to actually do is get the a custom configuration that we specified as JSON. So I'll say here, our config is going to be model.custom payload, 
just like that. And this gives us a dictionary back that we can look further into to get our actual title and subtitle out. All right, so let's do it. Let's grab our title and we're gonna see if I remember what we used for our keys. I believe it was just title. As a string, we definitely wanna cast it and we're gonna want uh, three more of these so we can just copy and paste it. And let's actually change each of these up to suit our needs in terms of what we want. We're gonna want a subtitle, an axis, as well as a theme. And these are all going to be strings that we have specified inside our uh, dictionary for our payload. So once we have all of these, we can actually start to use them. Let's figure out why our alignment is misbehaving a little bit here and we can then continue. So it looks like we don't have any errors. We just have some warnings that we're not using these. So what we wanna do is now use these right down below for title, subtitle, and access and theme. What we want to do is say paywall, paywall view dot view model dot access, and we're gonna pass in the raw value. If we're not able to create it, we're going to fall back to the uh, vertical flavor. And similarly for theme, we are going to create it with the string. And if we're not able to, we'll fall back to the dark colored theme. Now, if you go ahead and hit command B to build, everything should be building. And we can now ask this view controller to be presented with an animation. Now, one other point that's really important to note here is that we want to specify to Adapty that we are about to show this paywall. So we're gonna say that show paywall, we're gonna log that, and we're gonna pass in the model that we're showing. If you don't log this, there is no way for Adapty to actually uh, instrument in its analytics which paywall is about to be shown. So let's actually give this a run. We're gonna hit that button and see what happens. So let's hit this, and we see here that a light uh, paywall has shown up. So it's in the light theme. Our options here are horizontal, and we actually see the information from our options. So we see become a VIP uh, member, and we can see the description, we can see the prices. And in fact, this title, as well as the very, very dimmed out subtitle is coming from our remote supplied configuration. Now we're getting the first paywall in our collection. If we change this to last and click this one more time, would you look at that? The whole paywall is totally different. Now we have a dark theme. We have different text. We also have a vertical layout for our options here. And we can actually click on these and we're going to implement pressing the subscribe button because we can also use Adapty to show the actual purchase sheet from Apple. So the takeaway here is that you can specify configurations here and build out really powerful uh, custom A-B tests for your paywalls. Now what I've done here is a rather simple example, but you can really, really take this and make it as custom as you want. The other thing I'll briefly touch on here is you go to the A-B test tab to actually run an A-B test. So if I wanted to run an A-B test here, maybe we'll say the test ID is A-B test. We can specify some description inside of here, and we can also create specific paywalls for our A-B test. I'm not going to do so here since I believe this is a good example, but let's actually hook up this purchase button or the subscribe button, I should say, and wrap it up there. So when we click on that subscribe button, we actually go to the delegate that I've created here. And essentially what we want to do is we want to say, hey, Adapty, go ahead and make a purchase from the product that we are specifying. So we're going to say make purchase with the product. And we have a callback here, which gives us purchase info, a receipt. It also gives us Apple validation result, the product and a optional error. So what I'll go ahead and do here is we are going to simply say, Dispatch queue main async. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to show an alert. So I'll just say an alert is UI alert controller. We'll specify a title of purchased. We will also specify a message of welcome to VIP. And the style here will be alert. We're going to say present this alert with an animation we want to capture self in a weak capacity so we don't cause a memory leak 
And we also want to dismiss the paywall when the user taps on the dismiss button. So we'll go ahead and add an action here with a title of dismiss, a flavor of cancel, and the actual uh, callback for that action will be to dismiss the current view controller. So we'll say weak self, self dot dismiss animated true. And we want to do that again on the main queue so we don't actually cause a crash. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see this end to end in action. So there's our button. We'll hit it. We want to maybe purchase the yearly since, uh, you know, we feel like it's a good deal. We'll hit that subscribe button. Would you look at that? We see our pay sheet and we can say, all right, we'll go ahead and confirm this purchase. And we can see here that we are all set. The environment is Xcode. This is Apple's standard alert. And we also see our purchase and welcome to VIP. We'll hit dismiss. And just like that, we have now became a VIP uh, user. Now, before we wrap up here, there are three additional things that I'd like to touch on that are pretty important to set up adapting in a production environment. Now, in our Xcode project, we had used a configuration file to test our in-app purchases locally, but we also need to, of course, register them in App Store Connect. So here I've created a app instance for Sports Center in App Store Connect, and we are going to be creating our products here as well as linking up the shared secret and server notifications to the Adaptee dashboard. So once you're in App Store Connect and create your app instance, what we'll go ahead and do is jump on over to the in-app purchase or subscription option on the left-hand side. And the first thing we're going to want to start by doing is creating a new subscription group. So I'm going to try to keep everything named the same as what we have here in our local config file. So we're going to have VIP as a group, a monthly tier, as well as a yearly tier. So let's go ahead and type all this information in. We'll call this VIP and create it just like so. And we want to start by creating a subscription in it. So we'll hit this big blue button. And first and foremost, foremost we need a reference name. So we'll say monthly. And product ID, again, this is really critical that it matches because in your production environment, it needs to match what's an adaptee as well as what you're testing with. So I will just copy and paste it so we avoid any silly typos, just like so. And we can go ahead and create it. Now we'll need to do a little more setup momentarily, things like the price as well as the period, same stuff that we have done prior. So let's see, looks like an error has occurred. Try again later. Sometimes abstract connect is a little funky. So if you see this, just refresh the page and chances are your subscription has uh, popped up. If it doesn't, we'll need to change our ID for some reason, but I presume it will, which it in fact has. There we have our monthly. And let's just add the other one as well while we're here. So this one is annual, AKA yearly. I will copy that uh, product ID, hit that plus button, and we'll bring this on in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yearly, and I'll paste this guy in for the product ID. Once again, very important that that product ID matches, and we'll create this like so. And give it a moment to either spit back an error or refresh the page. Again, if it's a little wonky, just refresh the page and chances are it has showed up. While that's running over there, in the Adaptive dashboard, I've gone to App Settings and the iOS SDK tab up here. The piece of information that we care about is this App Store Connect shared secret that we'll bring in momentarily, as well as the URL for App Store server notifications. This is how Adapti gets notified that subscription states have changed or grace periods or cancellations, all that good stuff. So we'll fill both of those pieces in as soon as Appstra Connect loads on over here. So bear with me momentarily. Sometimes the Appstra Connect portal is very reliable and other times it's a little uh, tough to deal with. So if you uh, end up hitting these errors, just try refreshing the page a few times. Hopefully this cooperates. All right, so here we are back in subscriptions. Let's see what else we got in here. So we've got billing grace period, and here we have our app specific shared secret. So what we can do is we can say manage, and it'll ask us to generate it first and foremost. It'll create it like so, and it'll say that we can regenerate it, but what we care to do is copy this guy, and we will hit done here. We're going to come back to Adapti and we are going to drop in to this shared secret field, what we just copied. And of course, don't forget to hit that save button. And now we've got the shared secret, which allows Adapti to 
make uh, API calls on behalf of our application. So the other thing which we want to go ahead and find is the server notifications option. But before we do that, let's see if we can jump in here and set up some of the pricing. So looks like we continue to see errors here, but hopefully it will work momentarily. Otherwise, I'll have to uh, reload my browser and give it a chance to load. But the other thing we're going to look for here is the field where we can drop in this uh, URL and this URL is basically what allows Apple to forward subscription events to Adapti and you can see here the URL is api.adapti.io and we'll just hit that button to copy it right there. Let me refresh this page so we can go and find that particular field and I believe Apple has recently moved it so if we hit this app store tab and let's see if we can find it. We're going to click on app information. It used to be on this page. And let's see if we can still find it here. So we see content rating, age, license, and down here we see App Store server notifications. So for this URL, we can go ahead and hit set up URL and it'll bring on in this dialog and we can paste that URL right in here. And it's gonna say notification version and we wanna make sure we stick with the version one notifications to hook this up. And similarly, we'll also do sandbox server notifications. We'll go ahead and hit that button and once again, paste on in our URL and hit save. And we have now set up the notification URL. The other thing that I'll draw your attention to here is you can set up a URL to forward Apple's events. So perhaps you want it to go to your own server so you can catalog them in a database or you know, kick off some push notifications or do some custom workflows. It's nice that Adapti offers this for you as well. And let's jump back to the subscription page and see if this has decided to load. Otherwise, we will have to uh, relaunch our browser and I will cut the video and be back once it has loaded. All right, so I finally got App Store Connect to load here and I have created our two subscription variants. So just to walk through what we have done here, I had to rename the subscription group from VIP to test when I recreated it. And I've added two specific subscriptions here for monthly and yearly. Now clicking into one of them, we have the yearly here. The points to call out that are important is your product ID. I've had to change this a little bit because I recreated it. In addition to that, we care about the subscription duration, AKA the cadence that our users will be billed. Of course, we wanna set subscription pricing here, so I've done that as appropriately for this particular subscription tier. We also added a localization, English only, as well as a dummy screenshot and some information here, so we have all of our metadata filled out. And respectively, because I changed the product ID here, it's important that we actually go back to the Adapti dashboard go to products and then within products, make sure you change your product ID for the Apple uh, App Store Connect here. I've already done so, but just calling it out since it is pretty important. So now in App Store Connect, because we've set up our shared secret, as well as these server notifications, we can come back to the code and talk about a couple more interesting bits. So I've actually also got my physical device connected here that we're going to be running the app on momentarily to test out one less important bit. But one thing that we have not talked about yet is when I run this application on our simulator, you'll notice that the button always shows up here. And that's not really great because what if the user has already subscribed? It's a little silly to see it over and over. So we wanna actually be notified you know, when the subscription state changes, as well as get the user's purchase info before we show this button, because it's kind of silly to show the button if the user is already a paying subscribed customer. So that being said, we're gonna first jump into our app delegate, where we will specify the Adapti delegate, and there is one function that we particularly care about. So up here, we're gonna to conform to the Adapti delegate, and we wanna bring in the two required functions. The first one, which we're not going to use, is did receive promo, and we are also going to use did receive updated purchase info. So if I actually print out the updated purchase info in a string, uh, we'll see something interesting momentarily. Now, this is to listen for events as that purchase info updates, but what about back in our view controller? If we want to first check that purchase info before we actually show the button, 
Well, that's pretty simple to do as well. So what we were doing here before was that we were unhiding this button once we had fetched our paywalls. And we don't really wanna do that. What we wanna do is we want to also check the user's uh, purchase info state. So we're gonna do that in the bottom of the setup button function. What I'm gonna say off of the adaptee object is get me the purchase info. So we're gonna say get purchase info. It takes an optional uh, argument here, a force update. We can leave it as false, but I'll just make it true just to make sure it updates. And we'll see that we get a nullable info and error back. We are going to unwrap that info and validate that the error in fact is indeed nil. And once we have that info, what we can do is we can again print that info describing um, or print in a string describing the info. So I'm going to go ahead and run this application on my physical device here. And we are going to take a look at what pops up in our console once the uh, user has purchased a subscription. So bear with me here while this compiles to my device. And we're going to start here by seeing uh, some purchase info. And actually, we'll already see it here because I have already made a purchase. But let's actually clear this out and make the purchase one more time. I am going to once again unhide the button here. So we'll say is hidden is uh, false. That way we can make sure that the button is shown and I'll make a purchase again and we'll see what we actually get. So we're gonna click on the button here and we'll see the subscription that we saw in the simulator as well. And of course I am gonna put in my password on my device since this is for a sandbox user making the purchase. And once I've made the purchase here, you'll see some stuff pop up in the console. Just keep a keen eye on it and you will see some stuff in a moment that will be popping up. So now if we give this a run, what you'll notice is that we are going to be seeing some subscription information. So first and foremost, it is looking like it is printing twice. The reason it's printing twice is because it's printing from our app delegate as well as here in our uh, view controller. Now, what do we care about in here? We care about a couple of things. We get some information about the subscription that's valid. We can see a dictionary for non-subscriptions that is empty. And the thing that's important here is we get access levels. And if you recall, we had set up access levels tied to our paywall and products. And we can see here in access level, we have the premium access level set to uh, active or the is active property of that is set to true. So what I can go ahead and do in here is I can say off of our info, uh, we want to get the access levels and you'll see the access levels is nothing more than just a dictionary. And for the premium access level, we're gonna say is active and we're gonna ask if that is true, right? So we can basically go ahead and say is subscribed is basically going to be this. We'll get rid of this print here and we're gonna say if not subscribed, we want to unhide that button. So we're going to say purchase info and we're going to say dispatch Q main async. And we're going to say self that button is hidden is going to be false. Now this way, what it's going to do is it'll basically check, Hey, are we already a subscribed premium access level holder? If we're not make the button shown, AKA unhide it. If we are, go ahead and actually hide that button, don't show anything. So if I give this a run on my device one more time, I'll throw a screenshot up of my device momentarily, we should not be seeing that button. And actually we still do because we need to get rid of that button right there, that hidden call. And this way we have checked you know, successfully when the view controller is running that we're already a subscriber, so we don't need to see that button. So first thing we covered here is setting everything up in App Store Connect. And of course, the other thing is now that we have you know, tested this on our device, we can check the user's purchase info. Presumably the Adaptee SDK caches you know, the response locally. Let's say your subscription ends in 30 days. So this is the reason the force update is by default, I believe, set to false. If we click on into this, you'll see that the implementation sets it to false by default. And of course, we've configured that server notification URL where the app store will notify Adapti if anything changes. Now, the last thing I wanna cover before we actually wrap up here is how we are accessing our paywalls. Now, our paywalls, we can do this in a simulator so everyone can see it and follow along. So let me change this here. 
Now, our paywalls are uh, actually notated by a particular uh, identifier. Right now, we're just getting the last or first paywall, as we saw earlier. But what we want to actually do is get the identifier. So what I'm going to do is create a little bit of code here to actually pull out the appropriate paywall that we want. So the way that we're going to actually look at this is, let's say, first, and we can say, give me the developer ID. And we can actually print this out for the last as well. We can say, give me the developer ID. There is also a variation ID. So we're going to say here, developer ID one more time. And if we go ahead and uh, take a look here, we'll see printed out IDs. So we see our access levels. We see some other stuff going on here. And let's see where those IDs are. So it looks like we need to hit the button first, of course, to actually see them. So we'll hit this. And there we have two IDs. We have AB, which we had set for our AB test variant and standard. So in terms of just picking the first and last paywall, which, you know, we'll kind of just pick something randomly based on whatever is in that particular order, we can actually get the paywall more accurately. We can say, hey, give me the paywall. And we want to get the first instance of a paywall where the developer ID matches something that we specify. So perhaps we can say, give me the standard paywall. And we can clean up this code momentarily. When I tap on this, we'll see the standard paywall. And respectively, if I change this to AB, we should still be seeing a paywall, but it'll be the other paywall. Now this code is a little ugly, so we can clean this up for sure. So what we will do here is we will say private func paywall paywall with name and we are going to specify a string here and we expect to get a paywall model back so we're going to say our paywall model it's going to be optional and inside of here we can say we want to get from our paywalls so we're going to say paywalls dot first where let's try that one more time first where the developer id matches the name that is passed in. and that's what we're going to return here and this way we can clean this up a little bit and we can say, give me the paywall with a particular name. And here we can stick in standard perhaps. And that's how we will get that particular paywall out. So there's our standard one. There is our AB one. And if we go ahead and click it, boom, there we have it. So we can now get our paywall by identifier. We have set up abstract connect as well as seen how we could actually check the purchase info state for a particular reuser so we can actually cache their access levels and unlock all the goodies that they have purchased. So there you have it. You have successfully set up Adapti. Now, one other thing I want to draw your attention to is in addition to purchasing and paywall A-B testing, Adapti also offers a variety of analytic and integration solutions. You can set up attribution through things like Apps Flyer, Adjust, Branch, and there's a whole lot more. So that is Adapti in a nutshell. I encourage you to take a look at what they have to offer as well as read through their documentation. Now, I didn't spend too much time in this video looking at their documentation, but if you take a look at it as well as the quick start guide and the other platform examples, you'll find that it's very thorough and there's a whole lot that we didn't even get to scratch the surface of here today. So that is all I've got for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, start by dropping a like down below. I have added a link to the Adapti website and platform in the description. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, concerns, anything I can help with. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one.